Jalen Palmer and Alex Ramirez are two uber athletic prospects that just cracked just baseball's top 10 list of prospects in the Mets farm system. This week, I had Arm Layton on to discuss that list. And here is a clip from that episode where we talk about Ramirez, who one day could be the Mets top prospect, and Palmer, who is an absolute steal of a pick that the Mets were able to select in the 22nd round a few years ago. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you mentioned you watch a lot of video. What was the one prospect at that back end that really popped on video that maybe you hadn't seen before, hadn't seen much of, and then you kind of started to really see that there was a lot of potential there? Yeah, Jalen Palmer. Uh, Jalen Palmer is the answer right there. Uh, I look. There's there's definitely a, a wide range of outcomes, and and yeah. you know we acknowledge that with with a guy like Palmer, but he is also such a unique prospect in the respect that. He, he's a guy from Flushing, like, which is yeah. so cool. Pop-up prospect. There's always a few of those every year. And by that, just meaning they weren't on many radars. And with just a really strong finish to the high school year, or some you know showing out at, at a showcase, you get the right attention and some buzz starts to generate. With Palmer, it was a little bit of that. Uh, he was taken in the 22nd round in 2018, but for $200,000. So, so the Mets you know, saw him in, in their own backyard. And offered him, you know, well over a slot to to try to sign him away, and, and they were able to do that. Uh, there was a lot of questions, though, right? Like this is a cold weather kid, you know, growing up in the Northeast, not playing year round, uh, that really didn't have that much experience and was toolsy, uh, but you know, they didn't know how he would translate. And he really swung it well uh, in that pro debut. He seemed a lot more advanced than a lot of people would have expected. He's a great athlete. They've played him all over the diamond. Uh, which is really exciting too. He's 6'4", 200. He could add more strength. He's an above average runner. Uh, He was really good in A ball, struggled in high A, but 2020 was a big loss for a guy like Palmer, uh, given that he had just only played a rookie ball and was getting his feet wet. I I really like the swing. I think that there's some little tweaks he needs to make, but overall, uh, this is a really exciting player that can be dynamic with tools across the board and a much better field to hit than I think a lot of people expected. This is the kind of guy that could really make a major jump if it clicks for him next year. Yeah, and I think, you know, the numbers started to get better, I believe, as he made that switch. And and also, I think when you're talking about a player that, like you said, plays all over the place, there is that potential to be a super utility type guy in the future. And I I think it's good the Mets are already developing that with someone as athletic as Palmer. A hundred percent, man. And and remember, like when you have a system that um, lacks that, that depth, you got to take some flyers with guys like this. And, and this was a really good find regardless in Palmer because, um, you know, he, he obviously, if you do a redraft, he's not going in the 22nd. Round, I can tell you that. Is he going in the first? Probably not. But I could tell you he's probably going top five rounds without a doubt, probably even potentially top three rounds, depending on what his price tag would be. Obviously, that's always uh, a big factor. But above average runner uh, has potential for plus power because, again, he's got – a, a build that reminds me of Brennan Davis early on and Brennan filled out and he could still fill out a little bit more. I um, mean, the athleticism ties in too. Uh, I love his, his ability to work the County as a good feel for the strike zone. Uh, he just needs to, to make some slight adjustments to his swing. And I think he'll be, he'll be good to go. I, I actually am really optimistic on this guy, despite the 31.7% K rate, because he can swipe 30 bags. He can run into some power. He has a good feel for the zone, and he like he like you said, he can play all over, which you know hedges a lot of risk. This is a guy I'm really excited about. And I think if we're going to be talking about toolsy prospects, it's natural to move to Alex Ramirez, uh, one of your top ten prospects. Uh, he is a, a international free agent. This was his first real year, but I heard you talk on the Call Up podcast about how impressive it was that he even put up the numbers he did, considering that huge jump it is for an international player. Totally, man. So I take everything I said about Palmer and then take it to another level because at least Palmer played rookie ball for two years. Alex Ramirez signed as an international free agent in 2019 was, was the prize guy of their class for 2 million bucks and then misses out on his debut, right? It would have been 2020. That would have been his opportunity to play and he doesn't get to do that. 
and you know it would have been either Dominican Summer League or Rookie Ball State side uh, at the complex, and he doesn't do either. And so the Mets saw enough in instructs and whatever other context that they saw him, you know, perform to say, hey, let's let's take this guy straight to low A. That is a crazy jump. You see some top end high school talent not do that, you know, that are around the same age. So it, it's it's a testament to his approach. It's a testament to his ability to hit. And that's why, again, when, when people look at the numbers and they're like, oh, you know, 96 WRC plus, he only hit 258. I, I really think that was a pretty impressive line. You'll, you'll see guys get blown up trying to make that jump. And, uh, you know, 258, 326, 384, five home runs, only a 31% K rate. I'm really saying only because, again, you see guys get blown up uh, making that jump. And, you know, I, I really was impressed by his ability to go to all fields. Uh, that was something that I was looking at the swing. He can let it travel. He can go gap to gap. He's got above average pull side power that I think will, will develop more and more. He's an above average runner who can play really good defense. That's what stood out to me. I was I sat down and watched way too many Alex Ramirez fly balls um, and just was watching him track. He's going to stick in center, in my opinion, uh, and get better and better out there, which, again, takes some pressure off that bat. And he's going to be able to swipe 15, 20 bags. I, I really like Ramirez as a guy that could be a top 100 prospect by midseason. Uh, he, he seems to just check all those boxes. And the fact that he has the field of hit that he does already uh, hedges some of the risk of the usual international free agents. You know, it, there's always it's always a crapshoot to a degree. Yeah, and the Mets have a farm system that needs outfield talent right now. They're trading Pete Karamstrong. There's really, I mean, we do have, you know, three, maybe four outfielders in this top 10 if you include a Jalen Palmer or a Vientos as an outfielder. But still, it's a farm system that traded Kellenic and Pete Karamstrong over the last three years. Uh, they need one of these guys to hit. And I think Alex Ramirez has the best chance right now in the farm system of being that type of a talent. And that's really exciting for this Mets team that, that desperately needs that right now. Yeah, you know, it's funny. When you said that, I just thought about it. And, I, and again, this is not coming from uh, any any report or, or any sources or anything like that. But I think about it and I'm like, OK, if I'm in the Mets position uh, when they made that trade and the Cubs are asking for Alex Ramirez or Pete Crow Armstrong, I, I like Pete Crow Armstrong. I think Mets fans are a little harsh on him. Uh, because you know you you want to justify he's gone. the trade. <laughs> justify the trade. Do I think he's going to be a superstar? Of course not. But I think he's better than a fourth outfielder. But Alex Ramirez has way more upside. Way more upside. And uh, if I'm getting called on and asked for either of them, I'm trading Pete Crow Armstrong. So I think that can kind of give you an idea of of where I think Ramirez can land um, and, and what his upside is and his value as a prospect. He, he's he's not far off from being able to be that top 100 guy and. I bet the Mets were were very keen on holding on to him. Uh, the the bat speed's there too. I think there's going to be more power. He just needs to get a bit more under control, uh, which is normal for a 19 year old uh, making the big jump that he made. Let's just project this out. Two years from now, I say Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, Vientos—they've all graduated. You think this guy has a good shot to one day be the Mets' top prospect? Totally, absolutely. Um, you know, depending on if they hit an absolute home run on, on a draft yeah. pick in the next year or two. Uh, but y you presume that they're not going to be picking very early. Uh, even if the Mets choke at the end of the season, um, they're still going to be an 80 win team. You know, like they're not going to be a top five pick team. So uh, unless they just have an absolute steal of a pick, I think Ramirez is, is probably one of the favorites to turn into that guy. If not probably Matt Allen, uh, yeah. I I'm a big Matt Allen fan. I will have to see how he comes back from Tommy John, but if if Ramirez is putting up numbers, yeah, that, that's very feasible. Well, first of all, I want to knock on wood for you for that that eighty win comment. I, the Mets can fall apart. All right, I've seen it happen too many <laughs> times. You can look on paper and say it looks great, but I don't know. 